what we're going to be talking about today is self-improvement, right? Because you guys have probably heard of the whole, the common adage of, you know, um, it's a marathon, not a sprint. It's total BS, okay? I'm, I'm not going to bury the lead or anything. It is total BS, and I'm going to explain to you why during the stream. There is no scientific evidence that slow and steady wins the race is more effective than actually doing a full-on sprint in order to achieve what you want when it comes to self-improvement. And I know that sounds completely counterintuitive, right? Because you probably have done this yourself or you tried something and you were super hardcore about it for a certain period of time and then you just burned out and then you just gave up, right? So after having that experience, you end up sit thinking, oh, well, I should have taken my time more. Slow and steady wins the race. In some situations, that's true. But when it comes to our psychology, when it comes to the psychology of self-improvement, it's actually the exact opposite. It's actually kind of crazy if you really look into the psychological literature. So the issue is, is then why do guys who go super hardcore with something burn out and then just give up? Like clearly if slow and steady wins the race wasn't true, then they should have succeeded, right? Doing that super like hardcore technique. Well, the issue is, is they didn't do it long enough. And the thing is with the self-improvement stuff, the entire point of it is to make difficult things become easy, right? Because if the difficult things that you're doing with self-improvement are difficult forever, then like, what's the point, <laughs> right? It's like, you want to do this stuff kind of like, you know, do the tough things now and reap the benefits of it. Um, reap the benefits of it later, right? It's like delayed gratification. That's the entire sort of idea behind slow and steady wins the race. So the sentiment behind that, I agree with, but a lot of people will use that as an excuse, unfortunately, to just kind of perpetually procrastinate with achieving their goals or just doing such a very small minimal amount that it doesn't actually induce any kind of uh, behavior change from a psychological standpoint. And so what does the research actually show? when it comes to behavior change, it's that you, the, the difficult things that are difficult for you now can become easy between 18 and 66 days. This is a study done by the University College of London. The, the entire point of self-improvement, you could argue, is to try to reach automaticity. So automaticity, like I said before, is the entire process of making difficult things easy. And it needs to be just difficult enough that it becomes like a new software in your brain. So I made this uh, this presentation, I think a few weeks ago, where you want to start to look at your brain as if it is a computer, because it is, it's literally a computer. And then the things that you're doing in self-improvement, self-development, which is you know 99% psychological stuff, you want to imagine it as downloading softwares into your brain. So once the software is fully downloaded in your brain, you don't even have to like think about it. You don't have to expend willpower. It's not scary anymore. It's just, a, you, you just run the program, right? You just run the program and go. It's like when you're driving to work for the first time, right? Um, you probably remember every single turn that you had to take, especially if it was a job interview, because you were like, your, your fight or flight response was igniting. You're just like, oh God, I really need, I really want to do well at this job interview. But then after you landed the job and you went to work, like, you know, every day for years, you probably just like teleport to work. Like you probably don't even remember your drive to work today. These things become new automatic processes. And the reason that it becomes an automatic process in your mind is because you yourself, you can only focus on so many things at one time throughout the day. So your body needs to start or your, your mind, I should say, needs to start making familiar things automatic so that you can focus on the new things. Because from a survival standpoint, our brains like predictability, right? Anything that's not predictable, because anything it's seen before, it's survived, and therefore it's probably not going to die. But anything it hasn't seen before, it's automatically going to be scared of it because it's something brand new. It's a potential threat. It's a potential danger. But if you familiarize and desensitize yourself to that threat, that threat that your brain perceives, then it just becomes another thing. This is why it's actually entirely possible, for example, to do so many cold approaches with girls while sober that like you just, it it's just doesn't even make you nervous anymore. 
that's literally possible. That basically happened to me when I did my 30 day challenge uh, back in May where I cold approached over 200 girls. I didn't technically keep track of that, but it's probably at least just that amount. And, um, and I also got 50 cold approaches on camera, which is, you know, you could, you could see my whole entire process in the 30 day challenge course itself. Um, and I don't necessarily teach guys like how to cold approach in that. I just teach them like basically having balls and going after what you want. And for a lot of guys, it's <laughs> going and talking to pretty girls. You're not going to like, I'm not going to teach you any sort of like cringy pickup line or anything like that. Cause I'm just totally against that shit. And I think I'm not going to try to teach you guys to become PUA cells. Um, but that's a perfect example right there. The vast majority of guys are terrified of approaching beautiful women. Right. And what's the reason for that? It's because they haven't done it before. And so because they haven't done it before, their brain registers it as something that's like this, like dangerous thing, right? This freaking five, three hundred something pound girl is just like ignites your fight or flight response. It makes no fucking sense. It's just because you're not used to it, you know? And so the more and more that you do it, the more your brain says, Oh, this, this girl isn't going to kill me. <laughs> so I don't have to be afraid of it anymore. You do it over and over and over again. It becomes less and less scary over time. It's not just uh, when it comes to dating. It also becomes uh, comes around to being camera shy, for example. You know, when I first started posting YouTube videos, I would cringe every single time I would look at the camera and replay the video and I'd stumble over my words and do all these. And, and it was just awful. Right. And now I've done it so often to the point where I can just turn on my webcam and just talk and just go and people will actually listen to me. Right. And I don't actually I'll, I'll listen back to it and I won't actually cringe. You know, the reason I'm able to do that is because I practice it over and over and over again. I, I wanted to become really good at streaming. So even for me, like even though I streamed intermittently here and there each time because I didn't really do it super, super often, like a Twitch streamer does, for example, where they're just like super comfortable um, doing streaming. Every single time I would start streaming, like maybe a few times a month, I would feel kind of like nervous and weird and awkward uh, before I would start. I would get kind of anxious. So I wanted to completely destroy that, you know, and I also wanted to push myself and be like, OK, well, how many how much can I put myself on camera for an entire month? That's the reason that I did these past 30 days of just doing that. And now, even though, you know speaking has already become speaking and, and talking to camera and stuff that was already something that I was familiar with. I'm like even more familiar with it now. And I've increased my capacity to work and to be on camera, for example. So just by doing a 30 day challenge of being on camera every day for 30 days, streaming hours a day for 30 days, I could just stream like every other day and it'll feel like a piece of cake. It'll feel like nothing. Whereas opposed to before this 30 day challenge, that would have felt completely arduous. I would have been terrible. I would have been freaking out. Be like, oh my God, this is so, so stressful. But this month when I was doing it, it was stressful, but it wasn't like super stressful. It wasn't terrible, you know? And so for example, if I was to just do like, hey, I'm just going to do one stream per week for, for an entire year. Will you get used to it within that year's time? Yes. Okay. Let, you'll, you'll probably get used to it within like, you know, 30 weeks or whatever, right? But let's say, for example, that instead of doing 30 streams over 30 weeks, you did 30 streams over 30 days. You're still putting in the same amount of hours. Your brain actually um, not only, it actually gets more used to it in a short amount of time because it's a, a new novel thing, right? Right. If your brain thinks that, oh, I'm in this environment now that I need to get used to and I need to adapt to very quickly, it's going to download that new software very quickly. As opposed to if you extend it over time, it'll still download that software too, but it'll download a lot slower. The science of automaticity proves this, and this is why you should treat self-improvement as a sprint and not a marathon. So more specifically, you want to treat it like it's an intervals. In intervals of anywhere from 18 to 66 days, according to that study of automaticity I was talking about, I think the best way to do it is to do 30 days. 
because whether we like it or not, you know, we, we live in a society and we have these sort of uh, social constructs that help us to keep track of time and our environment. So uh, the months of the calendar or the months of the calendar year, for example, is a perfect example. It's way easier for you to say, hey, instead like, oh, I'm going to try to accomplish this within this year, right? New Year's re resolution is very popular. But uh, conveniently, and this works out really well, it's easy for you to be like, I want to accomplish this within August. I want to accomplish this within September. And that 30-day time is actually enough time to reach automaticity with, uh, with these things, and which is why it's, you can sprint and basically become make the tough things become easy within just that one month. And it's pretty sweet because then you can start to make self-improvement predictable, you know, instead of just kind of shooting in the dark. That's That tends to be what happens. And if you watched my stream yesterday of Tyler Durden's famous quote, self-improvement is masturbation, it becomes a masturbatory exercise because you feel like you're shooting in the dark and you don't actually have goals. You don't actually have deadlines. If you don't actually have deadlines for, for achieving those goals, human beings by our very nature, no, even the best of us were more lazy than we are active. If you don't actually have deadlines that you have to hit, you're not going to hit them. You're just not. Anybody who's worked, uh, owned their own business or been an entrepreneur or has been in a high level position in a company where you're managing a bunch of people, you will understand that. Where you have to have deadlines and say, hey, we need to accomplish X by this date, no matter what. If you don't do that, you're not going to do it. It's kind of like that thing. I, I think maybe you guys heard this study before. Uh, we're basically like, I don't know if it's a study or a conclusion from a research paper or something, but it goes something along the lines of like, whenever you give somebody a certain amount of time to do a task, even if the task only takes like a very short amount of time, they will end up extending and using that entire time to complete that task. <laughs> and so... So that's why it's like, if you understand that part of psychology, you're naturally going to grab, naturally going to structure your environment so that you have certain deadlines to hit. And so self-improvement is no different, right? If you say, for example, oh, I want to uh, be more of a social guy, then you, it, that's just such a, that's just such an abstract thing. What the fuck does that even mean, right? So you have to ground it down in reality. But what does that mean? Oh, I also am struggling in my dating life. I want to be more social. I feel uh, socially anxious. So I want to learn what it takes to be able to approach strangers and say hi and start a conversation with them. Okay. So in order for this to become a new habit for you, you need to do this, I don't know, like maybe once a day for the next 30 days. So day one, it's going to be fucking terrifying, right? Because it's like, you're just not used to like going up and talking to people. Your fight or flight response, your amygdala is going crazy. But then day two is still, you know, pretty scary, but less scary because you've already can logically think back to the last time you did it. Your brain can be like, oh, well, we didn't die. So this isn't that bad. And then you go to day three, not really that bad. It, it's, it just gets a little bit easier. By the time you're one week in, it's just like, oh, this isn't too bad. I still feel kind of weird doing it. Two weeks in, it's, you know, you're like most of the way there already. Three weeks in, it's basically you have just a little bit of fear that you have to get over, but you still do it. And then by the end, by four weeks in, it's like kind of like no problem, you know? It really just de depends on the degree to which you have to improve. Like for most of you guys, just doing like one pr approach a day, for example, probably isn't going to be enough. Um, if you really want it to be effective, you have to like really smash it, right? So the whole entire thing of automaticity is anywhere from 18 to 66 days. That's going to depend upon the intensity with which you do it. So if you do, again, we'll just take cold approach, for example. If you just want to get over your fear of of approach anxiety, social anxiety, just talking to pretty girls and stuff and asking them out, then if you just do that once a day, every day for 66 days, that'll probably get you to where you need to go where it's just another thing. And it's so habitual, your brain's used to it, that it's just an automatic thing and it doesn't even scare you anymore, right? 
as opposed to if he did like 10 a day, for example, or like even five a day for 30 days, you still got, you got in actually more approaches, um, in a shorter amount of time. And so your, your brain sort of, sorts of, sort of adapts because of that. Our brains adapt very quickly, especially when you're young, especially when you still have neuroplasticity, which is pretty sweet. So you can really kind of force it to grow and change in a short amount of time. Just that the reason that most people don't do it is because that method is scary, right? Doing an all out sprint is scary, especially if you don't know where the finish line is. It's way easier to just walk because then if you, if you walk and then you get tired of walking, you just kind of stop your heart's not like super pounding and beating and you don't feel like you're going to die. Like if you just start sprinting in perpetuity, you know, but that's the best way to do it. You want to do it in intervals. Again, think of it like downloading a software into your brain, downloading a software into the computer. That is your mind. There's only so many softwares that you can download at one time, right? Like imagine you trying to download freaking 10 different software programs into your computer at the same time everything gets backed up you know so that's way tougher to do so what you should do instead is pick a few different uh, things to download at once because your computer can probably handle more than just one thing and once it's fully downloaded then you free up more space to download more things and that's really what self-improvement is over time you pick a few different things within month to month spans of um Again, because it hits the automaticity mark about one month and psychologically, it just makes sense to be like, hey, I want to accomplish this in August. I want to accomplish this in September. I want to accomplish this in October. So what uh, what self-improvement ends up being instead of slow and steady like this, like very slow and linear, because that just really just doesn't happen. Most people just give up by then they get bored. <laughs> instead, it should be pretty uh, a lot steeper. Right. So it's a lot steeper like this. You kind of skyrocket up and really overcome your fears and and make the things that are tough for you a lot easier. And then from here, after that, you just sort of maintain. So this is where people screw up is they try to just be in sprint mode forever. No, you actually want to have some maintenance periods. Psychologically speaking, I'm going to refer to a fantastic book called Willpower Doesn't Work where he talks about basically you want to have, um, I don't know how he phrased it, but I like to call it challenge phases. So things like I talked about with my 30 day challenge, right? Doing it in intervals, you do a challenge phase for 30 days of whatever you want to accomplish, whatever is tough for you right now to make it easy. And you go really hardcore with it. And then after that, you have a growth period where for about a month afterwards, or maybe even a few weeks, uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be as long as a month you end up just kind of maintaining. And the way that you maintain is actually to just kind of completely take a break because your, your brain has to sort of process the new sort of stimulus. This, is, uh, this, isn't just, this isn't just when it comes to psychology. This is actually the same exact thing when it comes to muscle building. When it comes to muscle building, you're following something called a stimulus, um, uh, stimulus recovery adaptation. SRA. It's like it's, it's a whole entire curve called an, called an SRA curve. If you want to be really try hard with exercise science, but but basically you have a certain stimulus that causes um, your muscles to grow, uh, your, your your muscles to activate the satellite cells. I'm not going to get too technical here, but the satellite cells around the muscles to to fuse into the muscle fibers and and make them grow. Um, and then you have <clears throat> uh, so you have to stimulate some sort of response. And then you end up recovering. And then as you recover, you end up adapting. And when you adapt, the muscle is just a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger. But you can't do that if you don't have these recovery phases, right? So a good uh, training block when it comes to fitness, for example, is you do uh, something called periodization where you accumulate volume over a certain span of time. Conveniently, the best amount of time to do it is anywhere from three to five weeks. So basically one month, this is what I do for my own training. You accumulate for four weeks. And then after that, you take what's what's called a deload, right? So for one entire week, you just kind of taper everything off. And then from there, you restart again. So it would kind of look like this, right? So imagine that this is baseline. Uh, you accumulate for four weeks and then you deload. 
and then you deload all the way down to here and then you accumulate for four weeks, deload, accumulate four weeks. And then your progress ends up kind of going like this. Cause when you deload, you completely decrease your, your volume to allow your body to recover for the past four weeks of training. And so our muscles work like this. The scientific literature shows that basically our psychology works like this as well. And conveniently, we have that social construct of months um, that fit right between that time frame. So it's perfect to align both your fitness training, especially if you're trying to lose a lot of body fat or, or, or build muscle, to do it in basically four week spans, followed by at least one one week breaks. And you can do the same exact thing with any other sorts of psychological processes, such as cold approach, right? Or even something like NoFap, where a lot of guys screw up with NoFap is they're just like, oh, I'm just going to try to go on a streak forever for a long time. I think it's better to just be like, hey, I'm going to do 30 days. And then after 30 days, I'm going to not necessarily watch porn again, but hey, maybe I'll like let myself you know, relapse with my imagination or something. And then um, I know that sounds like dangerous advice from a nofap standpoint, but I'm telling you from a psychological standpoint, that's actually a more effective way of doing things. Um, and then after that, you're just like, okay, well, I did 30 days. Well, then next time I'm going to try to get 40 days and then the next time 50 and then 60, right? Um, that, that's, that's kind of a way to progress. And then eventually it's just like, it just becomes so second nature that you don't have to think about it. You're like, oh, I'm just not addicted to porn anymore. I don't feel like I have to jerk off all the time anymore. You know, so it's pretty cool how all these things sort of work out and it just makes self-improvement a lot more predictable where you do it in intervals, you do it in intense intervals, it's like interval training on a track rather than just running in perpetuity without a deadline. Cause like I said before, when you don't have deadlines, you're going to half-ass it. And when you half-ass it, you don't, that, by definition means that you're not really taking it too seriously. And then eventually you're just going to get bored with it and stop. The self-improvement is masturbation phenomena, right? That the vast majority of guys go through. So if you take self-improvement very, very seriously, you can do it very seriously for a short amount of time, right? And during that short amount of time, if you hit it intensely enough, um, the, the difficult thing actually starts to become easy and becomes an automatic process in your mind. And then once that software is downloaded, you could start to use it. And that software is like, it could still be enhanced and stuff. So for example, you know, it's not like you're going to completely conquer every single fear involved with the thing that you were feel fearful of at the beginning of the challenge, but you'll get a good fraction of the way there to the point where it really just doesn't have that much power over you anymore. And it's easy for you to build on top of. Just sectioning these, these things out, being more strategic with the things you're really trying to improve in your life, whether it be fitness, socializing, uh, talking, uh, no fap, you know, just being disciplined, talking to women, all that other types of shit. You can do it in predictable chunks and you can see a lot of progress in a short amount of time. Not only that, it's actually the best way to do it. You want to take an interval approach rather than a marathon approach. It's just scientifically way more effective. It's way better. It's way more predictable. Is it more intense? Yes, but it's not necessarily so intense that you can't handle it. That's where the strategy comes in because you don't necessarily need to be so hardcore that it's like overwhelming and you burn out because obviously you don't want to do that. But you do want to make sure you're pushing your limits just enough where your, your brain is kind of like, oh, shit, this is a new thing we need to get used to. The process of automaticity kicks in and then it just becomes a new software in your mind, right? So you can, there's two strategies to do that. One strategy is just to traumatize yourself, <laughs> uh, which isn't a strategy I recommend. And then another strategy is to do just enough, like I said, to get yourself to get to that point. And just making sure that self-improvement isn't any harder than it needs to be. Because at the end of the day, the entire point of self-improvement is to make the difficult things easy. And the psychological process of automaticity is exactly what that's for. And anybody who, who, talks about self-improvement, self-development that doesn't really implement or talk about these things. Um, I want to say like raise red flags and stuff, because this takes a lot of research and stuff to be able to understand, but more so just understand that um, 
maybe they're a little bit further behind and and what they know about this type of stuff. I've been studying this shit for like fucking 10 years now because I've been training hundreds and hundreds of people, um, especially in personal training fitness at first. And the vast majority of times, the reason that they didn't succeed uh, isn't because I didn't give them the right program or anything like that. It's just because of psychological things. They just couldn't stick to it. So I naturally had to end up studying tons of psychology in order to help people get results because that's the number one thing. Because if it's just the if, if it's just the information all you need of like, you know, the information to get from A to Z or whatever, you could probably YouTube it or Google it. And if you search hard enough, you'll probably find it. Right. So what actually makes it worth you buying a course or hiring a coach? It's having somebody who is very strategic and knowing how to make people go from point A to point B. Helping them structure their environment to make sure that the pain of failure is greater than the pain of success, but not so painful to the point where it traumatizes them and makes them burn out. So it's always kind of finding that mix there that, uh, that when, when you're coaching yourself or if you're coaching other people, you know, and this is basically what I've been doing for 10 years. I've packaged all of that up within the 30 day challenge course. Wait, so you can't marathon it because you get bored. It's not just getting bored. It's usually, usually when people get into self-improvement, it's sort of this kind of like they're, they're going off of this fleeting motivation, right? They're like super motivated and people are right when they say, Oh, well, motivation is fleeting. You shouldn't necessarily rely on that in order to get results. Well, I'd actually argue the opposite in the sense of, when you're super motivated, you should take the super advantage of that because you're going to go above and beyond to overachieve. And it is a temporary state. So the issue is, is if it's if it's a temporary state that you can use to put you in the maximum overdrive to like rewire your brain to make these tough things automatic, then you should be taking full advantage of that rather than just being like, oh, slow and steady wins the race. I have this great amount of motivation, but I'm just not going to use it motivation, you shouldn't rely on it, but it's a blessing when it's there. And so because it's a blessing when it's there, you want to take advantage of it to you know, push the needle forward, do some of the things that you're less comfortable with to get your brain used to those uncomfortable things in a short amount of time. Because if you extend that out, your motivation is going to die as that time goes on. This is what I mean by saying that you get bored. So instead, you want to take advantage of that. And if you take advantage of that, if you look at automaticity as just basically just the amount of hours that you have to put in, I don't really have an exact number of it, but let's just say it's the, it, the amount of hours you have to put in in order for you to feel to become competent at it, then you should use that precious motivation to try to get a bunch of hours in in a short amount of time. I think that's the best way to do it rather than just to... Because that motivation is just going to go away at some point. You might as well use it. So have a great rest of your night. I'll see you tomorrow.